All right. How are we doing today, you guys? Happy Sunday. Doing good. Yeah. See, we are, we came ready to participate. I was going to challenge y'all because the younger group, I think, out participated you last week and they did a very good job today. So my challenge to you is don't let them be the winners of participation for the day. Uh, I ask that all of you that can, we put our cameras on. I really just want to see your faces instead of just talking to names. And hopefully this helps me kind of remember who you are and get those faces um, more recognizable for me as we work through this together. Um, just kind of a reminder, you guys, sort of, you don't really have much for Zoom rules as it were, but if you need to stand up and move around a little bit, I completely understand. I encourage it. All I ask is that you're able to still kind of pay attention, focus, and then uh, when the time comes, you're still able to uh, participate when needed. And speaking of participation, you can go ahead and unmute to share what's going on. Uh, the chat obviously is a good option as well. So whatever you're comfortable with. And for this group, we're a little bit bigger. So I may not always be able to see you guys. So hopefully if you've got something going on, I will be able to figure it out either by you guys unmuting or by putting yourselves up in the chat. So first thing you guys, we're gonna go thumbs up, thumbs in the middle, thumbs down. How are we feeling today? How, how was our day? We got some middles, thumbs up, excuse me while I scroll. Oh, so many people without their cameras on. I wanna see your beautiful faces. All right, you guys, looks like we've all had a pretty good day. I, didn't, I don't think I saw too many bad days. And I don't ask because if you've had a bad day, how dare you? Um, I just kind of want to get a feeling of where you guys are at. And part of it is I want to work on all of us developing better self-awareness. It's not going to be something we're going to talk a ton about today, but every little thing we do is going to gradually build on. And then after today, the rest of our sessions really are about more that kind of in the moment game type stuff, pre-game routines, in-game, um, regulating our emotions and the way we feel that way. So it's one of my tools for kind of helping build and seeing where you guys are. So if you kind of came in afterwards, I ask that you all have something to write with and not your phone. Um, let's be honest, bit of a distraction. We'll talk about that today as well. So if you have something you can write on, write with, you guys are definitely going to be needing something to do that with today. And then, all right, got a couple more coming in. Okay, so just like last week, we are going to open up with a little breathing technique. So last week was super easy, right? Just kind of focus on controlling that breath, those nice big breaths in and out. Uh, that's one tool we can use when we're talking about just releasing some stress, being able to focus. Today, we're going to take it just a little bit um, deeper and more specific, and we're going to focus more on just mindfulness. And this type of breathing that we're, I'm going to talk you guys through is more about creating self-awareness, kind of checking in with your body, like what's happening physically to you, what's happening mentally, how are you feeling? Because again, we're gonna build on this skill as we get into some other topics as well. So I'm going to ask that you have your feet flat on the floor and then close your eyes. And I just want you to focus on your breathing right now, you guys. And keep in mind, we can't control all the thoughts that pop into our head. So as those thoughts pop in, I want you to go ahead and just refocus on your breathing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice deep breath in. It's going to go to the bottom of our belly, fill up. Now the bottom of our lungs filling up to the middle, the top, our chest is going to puff out. And we're going to gently push that air out. Once all the air is out of your body, you guys, deep breath in again, filling in from our belly to the bottom of our lungs, the middle, our top chest is filling up. Slowly let that air out. I'm going to give you guys some time to just focus on your breathing and get into a rhythm that feels good for you.
Great, you guys. Now what I want you to do is focus on your heartbeat. What's it doing? How does it feel? What's the rhythm? Is it fast, slow? Feel the rhythm of your heartbeat. And from here on out, you guys, when your thoughts start to wander, I want you to get your focus back by focusing on what your heartbeat is doing, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand how we're feeling. I want you to tune in with how your body is feeling. Are you sore anywhere, achy? Does your body feel really energized? Do you feel loose? How are you feeling? Tune into that. Again, control that breathing. Is there any place that's really tight? I just want you to focus on it. I'm not gonna do anything about it. We're just gonna recognize that it's there. Lastly, you guys, I want you to think, how am I feeling? How's my mood? Am I happy? Am I excited? Am I frustrated? How are you feeling? Let's go back to focusing on our heartbeat. Is it the same as when we started? Is it different? We're gonna go back to focusing on that nice deep breath in you guys, feeling at the bottom of our belly, bottom of our lungs, middle, top, puff out our chest, release nice and controlled. Good. Let's go one more time. Let's fill up that belly, you guys. Bottom of our lungs, middle, top. Puff that chest out. Release that breath. Nice and controlled. And then gradually getting back to your normal breathing, whatever that is. And when you're ready, go ahead, open up your eyes. Nice, you guys. I appreciate, even if this is something that you're not really into, I appreciate you participating in it. How are we feeling? Any different after that? Same, maybe a little more relaxed, less stressed than when we were started. More calm, good. So breathing, you guys, again, really, really simple. I don't need anything else but myself to use that breathing technique, whether it's what we did just now, kind of checking in with ourselves, or even last week where it was just the big breaths in and out. It can help us handle stress, anxiety, help us calm down. It can help us focus. So I like doing it in the beginning one, cause I have a feeling you guys are pretty busy. I just need a nice whoosh moment can be helpful, especially as we start our week. Uh, two, I want you guys to focus, right? Um, but three, it's again, like I said, it's going to build on some of that self-awareness. So as you checked in with like your emotions and your body and your heartbeat, those are things we're going to get talking about a little bit more in depth, uh, actually the next session that we have as well. Okay. So we're just building on those tools, but I want you to feel free to try them out. You know, if you're feeling stressed, just even a couple deep breaths in can be really, really helpful in those moments. All right, you guys. So before we get into our topic for today, goal setting, uh, just like a thumbs up in the middle, down. So thumbs up, goal setting is going really, really well. I didn't have to make any changes. Thumbs in the middle, had to make some adjustments and thumbs down, no judgment, totally forgot about it. So my mind didn't do it. I promise you there's no judgment here, you guys. All right. We've got a good mix from what I can see. Good mix. And remember you guys, thanks for sharing. You can go ahead, put your hands down. Hey, no, and no worries if you guys forgot about it, or maybe you realized that wasn't the right goal for me. So I would encourage you if you're like, wasn't the right goal for me, or I just forgot, let's try to rehash that, try to rework that goal. Maybe it's something completely different. Put that plan together. If there's an adjustment for my guys that were 
my guys and gals that were here, what adjustments do you need to make to your goal? Okay. Take some time to do that. Work that plan. That goal setting is a skill. It is not something you just kind of, yeah, I'm good at goal setting or I'm not good at goal setting. It's a skill that we have to develop. And as you guys do it more, it's going to become easier for you. Do we still have it up as a visual reminder? Okay. If we don't, again, I know we love to put things on our phones, but having something that is in our face every single day is going to be really helpful in reminding us, not just of what our goal is, but what the steps are that we need to take there. Any questions, comments, concerns that you guys want to talk about regarding the goal setting that we did? Okay. So here's the real question. Who remembers what today's topic is? Self-awareness. Oh, no, we have been talking about it a lot, but thank you for unmuting and putting yourself out there. Time management. Time management. Yep. I heard someone else say it. Time management, you guys. Okay. So we're going to get started. I'm going to share my screen here. So again, I'm going to do my best to monitor the chat, but if at any time something's popped up or you need me to go back a slide, if I'm not addressing it from the chat, please unmute you guys. I, this is about you and I want to make sure we are getting you what you need. All right. Okay. So time management, you guys get up there. There we go. All right. Participation starts now. Y'all what is time management? What does it mean? And your time. Say that again. Sorry. You manage your time. Manage your time. Okay. Using your time wisely. Using your time wisely. All right. Anyone else? Uh, value your time. Uh, make it efficiently. Ooh, value your time. I really liked your language on that. Value your time. Use your time efficiently. I think you guys uh, say, oh, go ahead. Be purposeful. Be purposeful. Okay. Y'all came to play today. Those are all excellent ways to describe time management and how you guys are talking about valuing and how you view your time. So I'm not a huge definition person. And I think you guys actually came up with way better stuff than what that definition says. And we definitely hit it. So now that we're all speaking the same language, we know what time management is. I want to know what makes time management difficult for you. You get busy. You get busy. Yeah, you guys, got, you guys have a lot going on, right? You're busy. What are we busy with, you guys? We know you have basketball. What else do we got going on? School. Okay. Anyone have homework. sports? Sports. What else? What else did you guys say? Homework. Homework. Goodness gracious. Yes, homework. And I know I saw some chats in here I'm trying to get that down. All right. I can't get to the chats, figure this out. I promise at some point I'm going to become really good at the getting the chat on my screen. Okay. So lots of things get in our way. I'm going to end the show because I want to see what you wrote in the chat now. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that can get in our way. You guys, my question to you though, is when we have this stuff that gets in our way, how do we choose where we're putting our time? So this is where I'm going to need you to have that pen and paper ready. Priority, guys. What is a priority? Something that you put in front of something, uh, uh, something you, that you put in front, in front of something. Okay. Something very important. Something very important. Something that needs to get done. Something that needs to get done. Good. Those are all great. So we know what a priority is. It's something that we need to get done. Here's my little definitions. I think we got it though. 
this is what I want you guys to do on your sheet of paper. I want you to put make two columns. Now don't make it take up your whole sheet though, kind of put it on the side. Our first column, I want you to label priorities. Now I want to remind you guys, there is no right or wrong answer here. There is no good or bad. The only wrong answer is the one where you're not being truthful. Okay. Especially because I'm not going to force anybody to share things they don't want to do. So I want you to be honest on this. I want you to write down your priorities, of course, under the priority column. Looks like we still have people writing. I'm not gonna rush you. I'll give you guys about another minute. And again, you guys, there is no right or wrong answer here. As you guys are finishing up writing your priorities, what we're gonna do, because I can't see your, everybody's face when I share my screen and now I have the chat up, what I really like you to do, oh, let me get this in here, is in the chat, you guys, I honestly don't care if you use a letter or a symbol, but I'm just trying to get an idea of our numbers here. How many of you just putting, a, again, one, Number one symbol, I don't care what it is. How many of you have two or more priorities? There we go. Lots of you have two or more priorities. How many of you have three or more priorities? All right. How about four or more priorities? Oh, we still, okay. We still got a good number here. Looks like we're slowing down five or more priorities, five or more. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop it there. Okay, so thanks for everybody participating in the chat. This is where it gets real talk. The young kids didn't get this talk. Y'all are getting this one. Hey, five or more priorities, guys. I want you to think of what that means. Are they really all priorities? I'm not saying they can't be important to you, okay? I'm not saying that you're wrong for having that. And I don't know what your priorities are, okay? But we're going to do some... We're going to do some activity, a little bit of an activity here, because I want you to start thinking about what does a priority truly mean to me? And am I, am I really living that? So in your second column, you guys, we don't have a label on it. We don't have anything in there. I want you to put as your label for that column, 100%, please. You know what? I'm going to stop sharing. I want to see more of your faces. There we go. Now, you have a hundred percent of yourself to give. Now, I know sports, we like to see we've got 150 percent, 110 percent. There's a hundred percent of you that you have every single day. I want you to look at your priorities. I want you to assign percentages, adding up to 100. And it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, you guys. And this is not what you want. 
it to be. I want you to be honest with yourself. What percentage are you spending on those priorities? Looks like we still got a few writing, so I keep doing that. So now as we start putting these percentages down, you guys, one, it's really hard to be good at everything, right? It's really hard to decide where we want to spend our time. Let's go, uh, we'll go show of hands because I can flip through here pretty quick because lots of y'all don't have your cameras on. Um, and by show of hands, how many of you are a little surprised by what you're seeing? Anybody? So yeah, okay, I like this. So everybody here is kind of like, these are my priorities. This is how much I spend. This is where I'm at. We're very aware of that. All right. Now, what if we were to flip the switch a little bit, you guys? We're going to take this out to column number three. Okay, make another column for me. Please. At the top of this column, you're going to put 24. Who knows where I'm going with this? Yeah, okay. I won't, I won't call anybody out, but I see you. How many hours in a day, guys? 24. Now let's assume we're getting at least six hours of sleep. I'd like to see more. But let's assume we're getting six hours of sleep, you guys. How much time are we spending in school? How much time are we spending with practice, with games, okay? Whatever your other priorities are, how, much, how many hours are you actually spending? Again, this is not about where you want to be. And if you have to guesstimate, guesstimate. And I won't make you do the math. But if you were to do the math, do the hours you spend on your priorities, are they close? Do they match up? And I'm not going to have you look on your phones, but if you were to look on your phones and see how much time you spent on different apps and things, how much time is that a day or a week that takes away from you can work on? Okay. So I like, I like doing that with, with my older groups to again, get a better idea of what that is to think about what really are my priorities is the time that I'm spending actually reflective of what I'm trying to do. Okay. So now that we've got our priorities established, or at least we're thinking about them a little bit more, we got to figure out how we can be more efficient with those things. Right. So I'm going to get you back onto my shared screen here. All right. Oh no, you skipped ahead, go back. All right. Again, looking back at that sheet, we're busy. We have so many things going on and all these things that get in our way of time management. My question to you and what we're gonna dig on a little bit deeper is when you think about what you actually are doing for your time management, are you really that busy? Or are we just being really inefficient, really unwise? Oh, I forgot, so are we not valuing our time? when it comes to choosing where we spend our time. Now, what I will say, you guys, is I understand that depending on the day, those percentages are gonna shift, right? If you have a tournament, more of what you give, more of what you spend is gonna be on basketball. No brainer, okay? Finals week, more of what you spend 
more of what you put into school is going to be a little bit more. So it's going to be really rare that we're ever going to be perfectly even with where we spend our time and our hours, but just something to be mindful of as we kind of build these habits. And we're going to get a little bit more into that time management. Any questions, comments, concerns, though, before we move forward? All right. And again, if I'm missing something in the chat, please just unmute and holler at me. Okay. So next, you guys, we're going to go show of hands. I'm going to get you nice and big on my screen here. How many of you know what your day is going to look like and what you need to accomplish when you wake up in the morning? Okay. Seeing some hands. All right. Good bit of you. How many of you know the night before or the day before what your day is going to look like the next day? Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be super specific, right? We just know maybe I have basketball. I have a test. I have this math homework due. Okay. It doesn't have to be super specific. You guys, how about for the week? How many of you right now, again, doesn't have to be specific. I know what my week looks like. I know I have basketball on these days. I've got this due. See, this is why you're my, this is my older group. You know what's going on. All right. So we have an idea of what's going on. We're feeling pretty good about we, what we have for our week. Now I want you to tell me what do things look like for you? What do they feel like for you? What happens when you don't manage your time wisely? Man, things get irresponsible. How's our stress levels get disrupted? Nervous, time wasted. Anybody, does it only affect you when you have poor time management? Does it affect anybody else in your household when you have poor time management? Or maybe parents, grandpas, grandpas, brothers, sisters get frustrated with you because we have to do something else. Affects parents, mom and dad, affects a lot of people. Okay. Teachers. Oh, okay. I like that. We're thinking about our teachers too. We're really thinking about others. So it affects a lot of other people, you guys. So one, it has an effect on us, coaches. There we go. Get those coaches involved too. They're here to help you. Okay. So we know that when we don't manage our time well, things don't, Chris, teammates, things don't go well for us. Our stress increases. It affects the other people in our lives. Whose fault is it, you guys, when, we have, when there's poor time management? I'm seeing a lot oh. of me. Yep. It's yours, right? Now, am I saying that there are things that happen that just because they're outside of your control, it's still your fault? No. Okay. There are always going to be things outside of your control, you guys. My challenge to you, and not just in time management, but in everything we're doing is I want you to focus on what you can control. Okay. In a very broad, basic sense, and I stole this from Ben Bergeron. Um, it's a really good coach in the in the CrossFit realm. If you're you're into that, but I can control my reaction, and I can control my effort. Okay, we're gonna get more specific on what we can control regarding time management, but I want you to think about that. When I'm on a basketball court, call doesn't go my way. Maybe my shot's not going in. How am I reacting when that happens? Okay. What's my effort like when that happens? Does that change? So getting more specific. I'm going to get back to um, <clears throat> what can you control regarding time management, you guys? What can we control regarding time management? And don't say reaction or effort, y'all. You got to dig deeper. We got to get more specific. All 
I see a raised hand in my notification, but I don't see where you are on my screen. Your plan or action, someone said. What you choose to do, how we spend our time. All right, you guys, I'm gonna get into some tips. The tips are tips. They may not work for you. Maybe you've tried them and you know they, they're not your jam. I will also probably say this in every session. What we talk about does not overrule what your house rules are or your coach's rules are or any other rules you, you may have, okay? So again, some of the stuff we talk about, you'll be like, I, I don't think that's, that's realistic for me. That's okay, okay? The other piece to this is we feel free to share what you guys do. If you see something on here or you, sorry, you don't see something on here and you're like, this is really helpful for me, share it, you guys. There are, I think last I checked, like 50, some of you might be a little bit more. That's if every single one of you comes with something to help, that's 60 ideas we can try. We're going to find something that works for us. So I encourage you um, as we get to this list here, go ahead, speak up, share what works for you. So there's a couple of different, um, there's really two ways I kind of approach time management, you guys. One is in preparation. Okay. Oops. So how can we better prepare ourselves, really get more organized when it comes to time management? So this one I think is really simple. Set aside time to organize your week. This may or may not involve your parents. I don't know if you guys have been there, but I have, where all of a sudden my mom or dad says, okay, this weekend we have, you know, so-and-so's birthday party, or we've got this, I, you know, we've got this extra, you know, practice. Okay. Maybe they knew about it when you went to do it, but you just didn't think to ask. So if you need to talk to your parents, Hey, you know, this is, this is what I know I have going on this week. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Right. And I know, again, you guys are busy. You have tournaments, you're traveling, you're doing a lot of different things. So if it's not the same time every week, that's okay. Maybe you've got a really big tournament, um, but it's, you've got a lot of travel time. So maybe, and again, depends on how you approach your game and your routine, but maybe on the way there, you talk about some things you can do coming up for the week or on the way home, you talk about that. So Again, just like goal setting, all this stuff can be adjustable and we can rework it. And again, it doesn't have to be super specific. It's just, what are my big deadlines for school? I've got practice this day. I've got maybe you some other extracurriculars. So you have a lot of time blocked off after school on a Wednesday. Having that can be really, really helpful to set up your priorities for your week. And part of that, you are going to get, understand that I really like those visual reminders. It's great to have, I have my calendar and my phone. I have it send me reminders to help me keep on top of things, but having that visual kind of broad, it could be for the week. I know when I was growing up, I had a dry erase board and I had two, I have two other sisters. My mom would write down everything we had going on. Um, and really it was just kind of, so we knew what was going on. So we knew, all right, like this person's getting a ride here, but it was helpful to kind of see that. So I encourage you put it in your phone. I get it. It's nice to have it. It's really easy to look at my calendar that way, but I encourage you to have something physical written down that you're kind of at least be reminded of when you start your day. Maybe when you finish your day, you can look at it now. Urgent versus important, you guys. Anybody have any brave, brave, confident guesses on what this means? Things that need to be done like as quickly as possible and things that need to be done in the future. Excellent. Which is which? Which was urgent? Urgent is the thing that needs to be done as quick as possible. And then absolutely and then be done later. Excellent. Okay. So if I have a book report due on Friday and I have a test on Tuesday, what's urgent? The test. The test, right? I don't like studying for tests. I'd rather read the book and do the book report. That's just me. 
Okay. But yeah, that test is what's urgent. So we need to make sure we're taking care of that. And again, for some of you, you may be able to go to class, take the notes and you're like, I've got this down. Okay. Others of you maybe have to write flashcards, go through things. So everybody's going to be different, right? In how we get that information, how we prioritize what's important to us. So again, general tips, you guys, this isn't everything you have to do this way. Uh, the last little tip in terms of getting organized, I expect less hands, I'm going to be honest, because we got a lot of older kids here. Show of hands, though, how many of you have ever been running around frantic before practice? You have to leave for a tournament because you're trying to find your shoes, your socks, maybe not all of it, maybe a brace, your mouth guard, whatever it is, right? Now, I understand when you come home from practice, the shoes, you want them out of the bag. You want to air those out. If you don't, let's air those out. Okay. Let's put them all in the same spot the night before. Let's get it, things together the night before. If you are studying and doing homework in a common area, so like a living room, a kitchen, put all your school stuff, wherever you put it in the same spot every time. Okay. Try not to leave little things hanging around the house. So now I have to go on a scavenger hunt to make sure I have all my books and all my assignments for the next day. Super simple, you guys. And honestly, maybe it doesn't save you a ton of time, but heck, if that can save your stress level, how many of you, when you were scrambling around finding things, maybe had a parent kind of on you about it too? Yeah, okay, so less stress for us, less stress for our parents, okay? And also keep in mind, if I'm going to a game, I don't want to be stressed out. Like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost forgot this, right? I want to be able to get into my zone before I get to a game. So let's set ourselves up for success the best way that we can. Um, we're going to get into more like when you're getting into your tasks and things like that. But before I go on, does anyone have any other strategies they use when it comes to um, getting organized for the week? like mentally preparing yourself, like telling yourself, I'm going to do this and like mentally being ready to do certain things on certain days. Oh, I, I love that. Yeah. Getting mentally ready, knowing you have that being kind of prepared for it. That's excellent. Any others? I'm like making a plan. Like if you have practiced this night, like when you're going to do your homework before or after. There we go. Making a plan. You're going to lead me great into my next point, but Anybody else have anyone, any other ones? I like to time block my schedule. Excellent. Now, for those of us that don't know, can you explain what time block means? It's where you plan out your day, but you put in specific times on, of when you're going to do it and when you're going to finish. Excellent. Those are all great ideas, you guys. Anyone else have any others that work for them? Okay, don't worry, you'll get more chance to participate coming up here. Okay, so some of the things, um, you know, that you guys just mentioned too, kind of work with this. So let's be smart. So really, let's strategize. What's the best plan for us? So for me, my example is going to be, um, I have practice and I have an hour before practice, bef um, before I have to get anywhere, I have to get homework done. Math is what I struggle with. Math takes a lot of my mental energy <laughs> Um, definitely something I get frustrated with. So what I want to do is I want to do my math before practice, because for me, after practice, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I am not very motivated to work super hard. Okay. So I'm going to save my English homework. Maybe it's writing and reflection, reading 10, 20 pages. That is what's easy and less taxing for me. You guys may be the complete opposite. So Again, when we're looking at, we're talking about time blocking, prioritizing, writing things down. I know I'm going to be really fresh at this time of my day. So I want to get the things that are going to be a little bit more challenging for me done at this time. Okay. The next one, I mentioned your phone a little bit, and I know it, it's really hard to just put our phone aside and not look at it. And now this is not only about your phone, but as some of y'all mentioned, this, this thing is a big distraction. Okay. So put it out of reach, put it on, do not disturb, turn the screen over so you can't see it. All right. Now I'm not saying you can't look at your phone for the rest of the night. 
Let's not be, well, let's not be ridiculous, right? I'm not saying that. But if I'm going to work on my math homework, I need to work on my math homework. That's what I need to focus on. I'm gonna give you a really ridiculous example. Ball handling, reading a book. I'm gonna ball handle and I'm gonna read my book, okay? Check the box. I did my ball handling, check the box. I got my reading done. How good of a dribbling workout do you think I got in while I was reading my book? A bad one. Yeah, probably not a very good one, right? And also, where was my focus? On the book. Uh, on the book? Maybe, right? Maybe it was on the ball. I don't know. How, how do I choose where I focus? If I'm focusing on reading, then I'm not focusing on getting better, better in ball handling. And maybe I can do some side to side, some push and pull. But that's probably stuff that I would think even for like, oh, you guys, you're like, that's, that's pretty easy, right? That's not challenging me. You know, if I'm reading, am I comprehending everything that I'm reading? Maybe not. I'll even take it a step, a step further. Maybe it's an audio book. If I'm having a really strenuous, hard workout and I have an audio book in, I know for me personally, I, I will block out any music, any words that are coming in when I'm in a really hard workout. Okay. That may not be you, but I want you to keep in mind that even people, adults were horrendous at it. I admit we think we're great multitaskers. I won't bore you with the research. There's no such thing as a great multitasker. You guys, you will be much more efficient if you focus on one task at a time. So kind of going in that, in that theme, you guys, and talking about, you know, the time block and having your list schedule breaks in reward yourself. If I can sit down and focus and guys, this is just the 30 minutes and the 10 minutes. It's really just a guideline. If I only have an hour before practice, 10 minutes of a break is probably not going to work for me. Okay. So this is just a general kind of guideline, make it work for you. But if I'm focused for 30 minutes, that's a long time. Like I appreciate your attention in this. Okay. And that's why I really want you to participate. Cause I know it's really hard to sit and listen to someone, especially cause we're not in person. So schedule that time, schedule that rest. Even if it's something as simple as breathing, getting up, just grabbing a drink, maybe grabbing a snack. Okay. I would encourage you to not take a break after 30 minutes of math and go straight into 30 minutes of English. Give your brain a break. So give your body a break by kind of moving, doing something. Maybe it's breathing and give your brain a break. Don't switch to another piece of homework. And again, will this always work? No. Will this work for you? We don't know. Okay, we got to figure it out. Uh, our next one, find a place that allows you to focus. That may not be realistic all of the time, okay? I would imagine that some of you, if you, you know, were able to go to school in person, maybe you're sitting in the commons or cafeteria, whatever you call it, or a hallway before practice, maybe in the locker room trying to get homework done before practice. You may not always have control of your environment, but if you can find a place that allows you to focus. And again, your house rules and your coach's rules overtake mine, but you know, headphones, can you put headphones on? to help quiet some of the noise that's happening around you. Might be an option, I don't know, all right? And again, if you find it really, really hard to focus, when we can't control what's going on around us, what can we control? What are some things we can try? Try something and fail. There's no harm in that. Um, this last one, and I would say nutrition is also very, very important, um, but get some sleep, you guys. Like I, really had a hard time with some of my athletes in college. They're up till, I mean, one, two in the morning with stuff. I'm like, why are we up that late? I have to get homework done. Okay. How efficient were we with our time? Were we efficient with our time? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Some days you have long days. Were we spending too much time on social media? And honestly, even if we're reading a good book and you really want to know what happens, your sleep is important. Your sleep not only helps you to be more focused, helps you have more energy the next day. Y'all are athletes, okay? 
you are putting hard work, not just mentally, but physically with your bodies, your bodies, one, a lot of you are probably still growing, but two, you're getting beat up. You need to rest. Sleep is a huge part of our recovery too, as athletes. So I would really emphasize, try to get on a consistent sleep schedule. Anyone have anything they want to add? Any other tips they do? I had some of the other um, ones that we had were, they'll have like a stress ball or some clay to kind of just play with while they're studying, while they're reading, that's helpful for them. Uh, we had a few that, again, checklists, crossing things off was really helpful for them. So again, you guys, not all of these are going to work for you. If you tried some of them already and you're like, that's not for me, no worries. Keep experimenting to find what's going to happen. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns on the last couple of slides? All right. So now you guys, we've talked about time management. What does that mean? Develop a goal. Okay. If you are not someone that's great at time management, if this is a new skill, time management is a skill, you guys, it's not something you either have or you don't, you can work on it. You can develop it, right? Like think about your ball handling. It's not, you either have it or you don't. Did you put in the work or did you not? Okay. So we can keep working to get better. So develop a goal around it. And it can be a really, really simple goal. Maybe your goal to start is set aside a time a week to set, like, look at my week and plan some things out. Okay. Depending on who you are and what works for you, maybe getting really specific is what you need. It's not what everyone needs. Experiment, you guys. There is stuff that wasn't discussed that may be helpful that I haven't even thought of that you haven't even thought of. Try the stuff that we talked about. See what works. Make adjustments as needed. Okay. And Again, we can't get better if we don't work on it. So put that goal setting plan together around your time management, put it to work. If we don't practice it, we are not going to get better at it. All right. And even if we fail, we still grow from it. We still learn from it. Are you guys good with this slide? It looks like some people were writing. Okay. All right. I just like my quotes, you guys, but okay. When we talk about how busy we get, how overwhelmed we get one totally valid that you feel that way, right? For me, when I start to get overwhelmed about things, I, you're going to think I'm just like drinking the Kool-Aid and telling you stuff. But I learned five years ago, if I breathe and I came for the little mantra, which we'll talk about that, uh, next week, actually, or not next week, but next time deep breath in. Okay. This is what I have to get done. This is what is urgent. This needs to get done right away. So when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we're feeling stressed, taking that time, you guys can do it. You have it, right? You know what to do. Sometimes it's just taking that step back, taking that breath to be like, okay, how can I fit this and make this work? And always understanding that sometimes things are just going to happen that are completely outside of your control. And the only thing you can control is maybe how you react. You may not be able to take a lot of action around it and that's okay. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing here, you guys. So regarding time management, do you guys have any questions on that? Okay. How about anything else you guys regarding, you know, mental skills, game prep? Um, you know, when I give you advice here, you guys, it's going to, I'm going to give you that general just because it's a big group of you. Um, so hopefully as we do tips and things like that, you find stuff that's helpful. You can always email me. You can always um, just kind of some follow-up troubleshooting things. Uh, I can hopefully give you a couple of tips that will help you there as well. But this is kind of your open forum time. I'm not going to you know, be the teacher that drags it out. But if anybody's got any questions regarding anything, mental performance, time management, goal setting, stress, even, um, not just, not just chance.
All right, you guys. How many of you have games this weekend? Nobody? Oh, there we go. There's my hands. There's my hands. All right. So I want to thank you guys for spending your time with me. Again, I know your time is valuable. So I encourage you, my challenge to you really is try one of those time management tips. All right. Find out what works for you. And we can always uh, revisit that, adjust it. Don't forget about your goals. All right. We have that going as well. So if you need to adjust it, redo it, fine. Um, but I want you guys to keep working on that. And then the boys, I'm going to have to double check. I know you guys have um, your kind of team communication, but Gentlemen, I have you April 11th next, and then ladies, April 18th. It will be regarding kind of arousal management. So that self-awareness, checking in with ourselves, it's gonna be more about before games and how we can get ourselves into the right state of mind for, for games and things like that. So if no one else has any questions, I will let you guys all go. I'll stay on for a little bit if anyone has any questions. Thanks again, you guys. Have a fantastic week. I want you to choose to make it a great week. All right. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you guys. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you.